This video is going to be how I make my smoked meatloaf. Uh, you ain't had real meatloaf, then you had a smoked meatloaf on the grill. Ingredients I'm going to have, I'm going to have some ground beef, some ground pork, black pepper, kosher salt, onion, garlic, Italian panko breadcrumbs and some parsley, fresh parsley. The quant oh, I also want to have an egg. The quantities of all of these ingredients is going to be on the bottom of the video or in the description. Well, also the recipe calls for some. Parmesan cheese. I just happen to be out. So I'm just going to substitute it with some of this Mexican shredded cheese instead. And also, not essential for this recipe, I usually wrap my smoked meatloaf in bacon. I don't feel like doing that today. So I have some Oscar Mayer um, bacon pieces, the fresh ones, well, semi fresh ones. And I'll just go ahead and throw that into the meat. So through the miracle of time, I got all my quantities together for what I need to put into the mix together. We're going to start things off with your Italian sausage and your ground beef. We're just going to go ahead and mix that together. Now I'm going to dump on my garlic, my parsley, and my garlic, parsley, and onion. Just going to put it in there. Next we'll add our Parmesan cheese, or in my case Mexican cheese. Just put it on in there and our breadcrumbs. And we'll put the salt and pepper on there too. And last but not least, we'll put this, this egg in here. And now we'll mix all of that together. Now what we have here is our meatloaf dish. And, of course, we're not going to cook this dish in our, in our grill because then we're going to get the smoke all the way around. It'll just be on top. But we're going to use this dish to make the meatloaf shape. So a nice little trick to do that is get you some saran wrap. And what we want to do, we want to line the meatloaf dish with it so now we have our dish with saran wrap lined in there one more thing I forgot to do I forgot to put my bacon pieces in here so let me go ahead and just put the bacon in this meat and we will mix it all up all right now we got our meat all mixed up we want to go ahead and put this meat into this this uh, meatloaf dish we want to pack it down in there to make sure it keeps its shape so we'll go about a quarter, maybe a little bit at a time. Just put it in there. I'm just trying to pack it down so that it's a nice even shape. <clears throat> so as you see, we got our dish here 
full of meat. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get our plate. I just use this plate that we have with our our um, seasonings. We will grab our meatloaf dish and turn it upside down. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and just lift everything up. Well, we can lift the pan up. And as you see, you have the saran wrap around your meat. You just go ahead and take that saran wrap off. And now you have a perfect little uh, meatloaf. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use our Memphis dust. Memphis dust is going to, um, we're going to use that to spread on or to sprinkle as a rub. The Memphis dust is um, a recipe that I use for well, mainly for pork, but it works good on this. I have the recipe, a link to the recipe on the website. We want to go ahead and get some of this sprinkled on. The purpose of this pan, I'm going to put it in the freezer with this meat. I'm going to put this, I got to also have a wire um, thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the meatloaf on it. Let me go ahead and turn this upside down one more time. Well, I'll just do it this way. Okay. So what I did, I got it upside down. Um, now that I got it upside down, I can put some of this meat, meat Memphis dust on the bottom. I didn't get that side. Totally forgot. This way we're going to get the Memphis dust on all six sides. But anyway, the purpose of this is we're going to put this in the freezer. Um, since we just made this meat, it, it, it could fall apart. So we want to put it in the freezer for about 20 to 30 minutes just to um, get it kind of hard before we go on and put it on the grill. So I'll be back. So I've run out of fire starters to start this fire on my grill but we're going to go the old natural way all you got to do is get a paper towel and soak it in some vegetable oil and then we'll light that up what that's going to do the oil is going to slow the burning process and it's going to slow it long enough to ignite the coals that way it's a nice clean way of starting the fire without using lighter fluid so today I'm going to be using my vision grill this is the poor man's version of the big green egg. A nice ceramic grill. But you can get this done on um, any type of grill. We're going to be using an indirect heating today. So I will be using a plate setter to make that heat go around in the dome. Make that smoke come around instead of having to fire directly under the meat. So I'm going to lift it up. I already put my lump charcoal in for right now. I got two pieces of uh, paper towel with uh, the vegetable oil on it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a light. So I'm going to let that come up and 
let it ignite and it's going to go slow enough to ignite some of these coals and then we'll be ready to get our heat together after we get up to temperature probably get it to about 200 some degrees then I'll go ahead and put the uh, heat deflector in and then we'll get it risen up to 325 to 350 degrees and we'll be ready all right I got my temperature and my grill about 200 something degrees I'm gonna go ahead and put my heat deflector in for my indirect cooking getting my plate setter in and now my heat deflector which doubles up as a pizza stone so as you can see the direct heat the direct flames are on the other side of this stone so when you put your meat above it all of your heat and smoke is coming from around all the way around and it's not giving direct heat and with this ceramic uh, grill I'm just going to keep all that heat and moisture in so your food's going to come out nice and juicy now in case you're wondering about the indirect heating this method I'm using with my grill here um, I got a little stone in there and the heat is going around it now, if you're wondering how can you get this effect with a like an ordinary Weber grill uh, what we do here for indirect heating we put our coals on one side of the grill and the other side we don't have any coals on so if you want to cook something like sear it or get it real hot to use that right over the coals method but go to the other side and you'll get your uh, indirect heating um, we want it indirect because we don't want it like burning and you know when when the uh, juices start coming down we don't want flares and stuff like that so we want to do indirect heating and plus indirect it tries to heat your food more uniform so you don't have a lot of uh, maybe burnt spots in one place and um, undercooked in the other so Right now I'm going to use my vision grill, but uh, you can also use this in the um, a regular Weber. Alright, now I got my meat from off the freezer, about ready to put it on the grill. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit more, put a bit more Memphis dust on here. Some of the parts that looks like it may not have gotten to. And I usually cook this directly on the grill. I put the meat directly on the grill. But since I got this little wire, um, little wire rack here, I'll just put this right on the grill. It'll make it easier when I pick it up. And also, I won't get my meat stuck on the actual grill. And uh, therefore, I won't be losing the tasty meat. Another thing I'm going to do. I got this little thermometer here, it's a Maverick, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna stick this lead in my meat so I monitor this temperature. Um, this is gonna be ground this is ground beef, so well done is 160 degrees. So the recipe that I got calls for you to cook this, and if you're gonna put sauce on it, once you get up to 140 degrees put the sauce on and then cook it to 155 degrees take it off the grill and let it let the temperature continue to rise up to 160 now where I'm from we don't take no chances with well done so I'm gonna go ahead and cook this to 160 and then take it off and eat it when I feel like it uh, but again if you want to be technical um, go ahead and let it rise up to that 160 um, after you take it off at 155 so it should take about an hour and a half to two hours to do. And once it's done, it's done. Like I say, if you're gonna get some sauce on it, put about 135, 140 degrees, 
so that sauce can kind of harden up, you know, kind of caramelize on it a little bit, and um, you'll be in business. Uh, see you when it's done. All right, just put this on the grill. Um, as tempting as it may be, once you close this grill, do not, and I mean do not open this grill up for any reason um, before you get to 130 degrees. We want that smoke to get on here, get in there, and um, take hold. All right, we got our temperature up to 136 degrees right now. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. Um, I got some hot dogs on the grill for my daughter. We go ahead and flip them a little bit. But here's the meatloaf right here. It looks, it looks real good already. But that Memphis dust, you really don't even need no sauce. However, I'm gonna go ahead and put some sauce on it. Just gonna mop it on it. In case I didn't say this before, um, I'm not going to take any credit for any recipe that I ever put on here. Um, I've done research on the internet and just tried different things. So these are not my recipes. I'm just um, showing them in case other people want to. Try what I try. And since I do got this little this wire rack, I can actually get this thing underneath a little bit. Try to get some on the bottom. I ain't gonna be able to get the whole thing, but some of it. I would flip it over, but we'll just go with what we got. And this this you can use whatever sauce you want. Use your favorite sauce. Uh, my wife, she she docked her something up together, so I can't tell you what's in here because she did it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and get it to about 160 degrees. And here we go, 160 degrees. Time to take it off. Now this is the final product, and boy did it turn out to be good. If you tried this recipe, or you like it, or you got any comments, just let me know below. And if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Alright, thank you.